In the last lecture, we had discussion on basic circuit element resistor and in this lecture, we are going to understand what is Ohm's law. Ohm's law is named after German physicist Georg Simon Ohm and in 1827, Georg Simon Ohm performed the measurement of applied voltage and the current through different electrical circuits and to justify the result of experiment, he used a more complex equation than the modern form of the Ohm's law. So in this lecture, we will focus on the modern form of the Ohm's law. So let's see what is Ohm's law first and then we will understand it. According to the Ohm's law, the current density J in a conductor depends on the electric field intensity E the properties of the conductor and the temperature and if we consider the conductor is having the same property and the temperature is not changed then the current density J is directly proportional to the electric field intensity E and to understand this in a better way I have taken one conductor and this conductor is having the cross sectional area equal to A and the length of the conductor is equal to L and you can see the voltage across the conductor is equal to V. This is the positive terminal and this is the negative terminal and we know the current will flow from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. So current will flow in this direction and the current density J will also be in this direction and the electric field intensity will be in the same direction because we know the electric field is from the positive terminal to the negative terminal and therefore when we will place a positive test charge in the electric field it will experience the force from left to right and the direction of electric field intensity is in the same direction of the force experienced by the test charge. Therefore, electric field intensity will have the direction from left to right or you can say from positive terminal to the negative terminal. And we know electric field intensity is equal to the voltage divided by the length of the conductor. Now if you increase electric field intensity, if you increase the electric field intensity keeping the length constant, we have assumed that we are not changing the physical properties of the conductor. This means we are not going to change the material of the conductor, the cross sectional area of the conductor and the length of the conductor. So length is not changing and you are increasing the electric field intensity. This means the voltage will also increase and we know when voltage increases the current will also increase so this implies the current I is increasing and this implies the current density J will increase because current density J is equal to the electric current divided by the area and area is constant the cross sectional area is not changing and you are increasing the current I. This means current density will increase. So eventually you can see that on increasing the electric field intensity, current density is increasing. Similarly, when you decrease electric field intensity, current density will decrease and therefore current density is directly proportional to the electric field intensity. And now if we remove the proportionality sign, then we will have current density J equal to sigma multiplied to the electric field intensity where sigma is a constant and sigma is known as the conductivity. It is known as the conductivity and the conductivity is equal to 1 over the resistivity and resistivity is denoted by rho. Resistivity is very important. It is the 
parameter which is dependent on the material. So if we change the material of the conductor, resistivity will change and hence the conductivity. And the SI unit of resistivity is ohm meter. And for ideal conductors, resistivity is equal to zero. And for ideal or you can say perfect insulators, resistivity is equal to infinity. So this is all about the first form of the Ohm's law. The current density J equal to sigma times the electric field intensity E is known as the first form of the Ohm's law. This is known as the first form of the Ohm's law or it is known as the point form of the Ohm's law. The point form of the Ohm's law. There is one more name. It is also known as microscopic microscopic form of the Ohm's law. So we are done with the first form of the Ohm's law and now we will move on to the second form of the Ohm's law. And to get the second form, we will use the first form. We know from the first form, current density J is equal to conductivity sigma multiplied to the electric field intensity E. J is equal to current I divided by the cross-sectional area A. So in place of J, we can write current I divided by the cross-sectional area A. Sigma we can write as 1 over rho. 1 over rho and electric field intensity is equal to voltage divided by the length voltage divided by the length and from here we can say that voltage V is equal to rho L divided by A multiplied to the current I all these three rho L A are the properties of the conductor Rho is the property of the material we are using for the conductor and if we are not changing the material of the conductor, Rho will remain same or you can say constant. L is the length and again if we are not changing the length of the conductor, L will remain same and A is the cross sectional area of the conductor and if the conductor is not replaced with some another conductor having different cross sectional area, A will also remain same. Now focus on one very important point. Initially I said we also keep the temperature same because when you change the temperature, the length and area will change and therefore we will have a different value of rho L by A which should be constant according to the Ohm's law. So temperature should not change and the conductor should remain the same. And if these things are followed, then we can say that rho L divided by A is a constant and the constant is equal to R, which is the resistance. So resistance R is equal to rho L divided by A. And therefore, we can say that the voltage V is directly proportional to the current I. And from here we can say that voltage is equal to resistance multiplied to the current. Now this one here is the second form of the Ohm's law. This is the second form of the Ohm's law. And this form is also known as the circuital form of the Ohm's law. Now we will move on to the third form of the Ohm's law. And for the third form we will use this form V is equal to R multiplied to I and now I will divide both the sides by the resistance R. This will give me I is equal to 1 over R multiplied to the voltage V and 1 over R is known as the conductance. It is the reciprocal of the resistance. So we have I equal to the conductance which is represented by G multiplied to V. So this one here is the third form of the Ohm's law. There are more forms of the Ohm's law but in this course only these three forms are useful and now we will talk about something which we know as ohmic conductors and non-ohmic conductors. The conductors which follows the Ohm's law 
v equal to r i precisely or you can say completely are known as ohmic conductors and the conductors which do not follow v equal to r i this means their resistance is not constant then we call these conductors non-ohmic conductors and as i told you depending on the change in temperature the resistance will also change and to calculate the change in resistance we have a formula let's say initially the temperature is equal to t1 and at this temperature the resistance of the conductor is equal to r subscript t1 and the new temperature is t2 and at this temperature the resistance is r subscript t2 and we are required to calculate r t2 so we can calculate r t2 by simply using the formula r t2 equal to r t1 inside the bracket 1 plus alpha which is the temperature coefficient of resistance multiplied to delta t delta t is equal to t2 minus t1 plus beta multiplied to delta t whole square beta is a very small value therefore we can neglect beta delta t square and we are left with rt2 equal to rt1 inside the bracket 1 plus alpha delta t rt2 is the resistance of the conductor at temperature t2 rt1 is the resistance of the conductor at temperature t1 alpha is the temperature coefficient of the conductor we are using delta t is t2 minus t1 so from here we will get the change in resistance and in case of conductors when temperature increases the resistance value will also increase so this is all for the ohm's law remember the second form of the ohm's law v equal to ri because we will use it a lot in this course